we tried to write, record, and film this episode while doing a live stream, and we failed miserably. So we're going to do it again. We have a reference. We've made some changes to get the sounds we want, right? We got yes. the arrangement we want, and we're going to film this now and have some fun. It's going to be cool. And we're going to start off with... The bass. But this is a cool bass. This isn't your normal, everyday bass. Right? Yeah. Did you hit, hit save? Uh, <laughs> yes, I just hit save, and we're tracking to the tape machine. <laughs> All right, let's uh, double check our volume here. Okay. I think we're good. You want to do a take? Yeah, let's All do right. So I can quickly turn off the, the, the both pedals we have, the Super Chorus and the Synth pedal from Boss. There we go. There you go. Sounds like a bass. But the amp is, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. It's cool. All right, kick everything on. So it's our bass and it's our kind of synth sound, really, yep. for this one. And it's through the whole tune, obviously. Now let's go take a look at the amp real quick. Today's bass rig is a really cool one. Marshall JCM 2000, I know, guitar, but it's on bass today, into an early 70s Fender JBL 2x15 cab. And it sounds really cool. A lot of character in this one. Mic'd up with a single Audio-Technica AT4050. And that's our bass tone. Okay, this was a fun one, starting with El Bass. Yes. This time around. Yes, bass set the, the tone, the rhythmic environment with that boss pedal, and suddenly we had a click. Yep. So it was great. Yeah. Not easy for me to play, <laughs> too. <laughs> so just to give the arrangement a little bit of movement, I'm running the bass through a Zvex Mastatron. Well, it starts with actually the MXR Dynacomp, just to level it out, just completely level it out. And then it's going to the Mastatron, and it's like a, it's like a busy B sound, and that sounds... Just that sound sounds like this. Okay, so it's pretty it's pretty gnarly, but what here where is uh, the B section is number two. So let's do this <laughs> recall. Is two. something wrong with the bass track? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll just kick this on so you hear what it is. And it just adds texture. Mm -hmm. And it'll make sense when you hear the final mix at the very end with how it works out with what goes on with the guitars yes. and the drums and everything. And that's our bass tone for everything. No other effects. I'm not sending it anywhere, am I? No. Okay. Let's see what these strums sound like. See, it's kind of, it's nice and tight, isn't it? Yeah. So here. Oh, that's cool. How's that balance? Uh, I, I think that's pretty good. Okay. I mean, the, the, the hi-hat is, is, is not, not uh, bothering. Okay, I'm trying to hit it way lighter than you yeah. were. So yeah, let's just do one.
As you can see by this setup, it's not exactly a normal <laughs> drum setup. It is a minimal mic setup, but not normal at all. The kick drum, there's an RE20 just inside the hole with the sub kick on the outside. The snare mic here is an Audio-Technica AT4047 in figure eight with the null side pointing at the hats. We got a little extra baffle here to keep out the hats even more. And then the only other mic on the kit is a Mic Parts S25 here on the Tom. So there's no hi-hat mic. So I'm controlling the volume of the hats purely by playing. The whole goal that I wanted with this was to have a mono kind of loop-ish type, you know, analog loop drum sound. The setup on the console is pretty simple. Pull the kick up on one channel, I pull the snare and the Tom up on another, and it goes to a single bus. The only thing that's actually happening on the drum bus is a little bit of the royal blue that's in the DIY RE color palette. And that's it. No additional EQ, no additional compression other than what we did that day because yes. we thought the sound was cool, so why go change it? But the way we differentiated the parts was with the reverbs that we chose to use. So let's start by taking a little listen to the A section and then I'll kick the reverbs on as we get to the next section. This is the dry sound. Then for B, we did this. Then for the C section, there's one more change. So I know, especially the C-section, that sounds a little obnoxious on its own, but in mm -hmm. context, it, it's actually kind of cool and it adds a little bit of depth to the kit. My favorite one was the Pro R3, and that's what's on the B-section, so it spreads the kit out a little bit. You know, not technically a left and right, because there is none, but it does make it like kind of stereo and it's a little bit of a slap back. And that's the drum sound. Uh, I'll just hear your 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 snare uh, right. roll, so it should be good. Nice. Do you hear that? No, I think it's good. You want to take a listen from the top to make... We yeah. don't have anything else with this tone now, right? I don't think so. Okay. Crap. I that think, is cool. And with that bloom, yeah. with the MIDI verb taking it, oh, yeah. I love it. Okay, what do you want to do next? And then, uh, then uh, I think what I. What else with this tone? Is there anything else? Yeah, with it, was, the... it was the last, the last section, which was. Uh...
Okay, we gotta record over here. I kind of like that tone. Yeah. Like very dreamy. Got out clean too. That was nice. nice. All right, cool. You want to hear that or go to the next? Uh, beat? Next. No crap. Awesome. Yeah, that's right. Marshall setup, we have an Audio Technica 4050 on towards the edge of the cone. And then for the Bugera sound, we have a ribbon 4081 also away from the center of the cone. So here's the synth pedal, which we used for anything that was kind of spacey, uh, analogy, like a pad, something, or with a nice organ tail. So we always use that one. Then if we needed anything with bite and sharp, then we used the good old EVH overdrive, even to give it you know, sustain and anything that make it more like heavy metal type of tone and not so warm. So this um, is great, even use it for bass eventually at some point. Then Super Chorus, also for the bass, believe it or not, it's just the combination of synth and chorus on the bass was like whoa it's like it was great and then the overdrive going to the bugera was like oh there's a nice overdriven power chord tone and it was sweet nothing else one more thing for the last a section where we beefed up those rhythm guitars we actually used this head headlight to split the guitar single and send it to the marshall and the bugera so we used the the EVH on the Marshall just to bring in a little bit of, you know, like edge and low end to the overdrive tone from the Bugera, and that's the final rhythm tones. Let's check first what we did for the B section where we added some distorted guitars to make a difference. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> That's cool. And it just added a little bit of depth to the, the tone, because the tone is cool. At least I think it's cool. Yeah. But we wanted it to not just be a normal kind of sound. Again, when we get to the final playthrough at the end, you'll hear how all of that stuff comes together. Now, the rhythm guitars as a group are going to the Trident high-low filters, and then that is going over to the Golden Age Comp 54s. On the A section, I found this synth sound where you hit a note and then everything comes behind it. And um, it, was, it was like really, really sustainy. And that I think was great because I don't think I, no, we didn't put anything else around it. It was just that melody against the bass and that was it. So here is that A melody. out. That is the bloom setting on the MIDI verb. 45. If you got a MIDI verb, it's pretty cool. And that, that gave us the dreamy, big, nice, long kind of tails that was kind of cool. 
And that's the A melody. So here is, the, did you do anything, was there a pedal on this or no? Was this just actually guitar? Yeah, it was just playing guitar. Okay, let's... Playing guitar, distort it. We did add a couple things. One, it's going to our quad reverb. That is the, it's like a 500 millisecond delay, so it's actually slightly out of time, just a, just a little bit. And that's going to a flanger, and then on top of that, added some good old DD5. Well, when you hear it solo, you hear the pattern that the delay does in the back on tiridum, tiridum. Unintended. <laughs> and that's the two main melody parts of the whole song. The outro is a kind of a reprise of the A. So that dreamy melody is back in. And then the fade out's perfect. Yeah. I won't play the whole thing now, but it, 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 the way you played it worked out so well. So there's a lot of delay. <laughs> there's a lot of things happening to them. A lot of it gets lost in the mix. And most of it just actually kind of helps things separate depth wise. And just, we thought it was cool. So that's why we did it. I mean, that's the ultimate thing is we thought it was cool. So that's what we did. There, there's a lot of, we're, we're get, we'll do the full run through in a second. So you'll get to see all the on and off automation, the, the manual automation, and there is a lot. So let's, I think it's time to hear the whole thing. Yes, let's all do right. it. 